Hi everyone, we are on lesson 13. So we've gone through primary and secondary tools and let's start exploring some of the creative things that you can do when color grading. Now the colors in a scene can influence how your audience should feel. Um, and you guys did a film analysis of color usage in film. So you can see all the different ways that people have used color to denote feelings or character, uh, emotions, or mood. Color can quickly help you communicate place and time. Let's start working on different ways of creating different looks. The first thing we want to do is um, creating a black and white shot. All right, so let's jump to clip number 29 and Let's make this black and white. Now, typically, people will jump to the saturation and then desat it, but let's do it in a different way. Let's jump over to the other palette right next to the primary wheels, which is the RGB mixer. At the very bottom of this palette is a monochrome. Click that. And this turns it monochrome, which is you know essentially the same as desaturating to zero. But this also gives you some controls to adjust the color channels before it becomes black and white. So what the red will do is increase or decrease the red in your image. We know that we've got a bunch of pink. We've got a lot of blue in our sky, and we got some green in the background. So if we go monochrome, First thing I'll adjust is the blue, so you can see how that affects the sky. I'm bringing it up, looking at look at how that adjusts the different shades of gray. If I bring the red up, you can see how that affects our image too. So this is a way of really getting to uh, adjust your image even when it's just black and white. So you can now adjust the tonality of this black and white, the shades of gray that you're able to see. I can also adjust the contrast of my image if I wanted to give it a little bit more of a stronger, uh, stronger look. Okay, that looks nice. Let's save this look and let's save let's save this look into our gallery. Right click, save, grab still, and I'll rename this. It's black and white. Next thing I want to do is use a talk about a lookup table. And lookup tables here, uh, for our purposes in this uh, particular lesson, is going to add a creative look to um, our shot. Now LUTs, or lookup table, they're very similar to presets in that they affect the color and luminance of your image with just one click of a button, but Lookup tables have, uh, have a lot more uses than just that. They can assist with gamut conversions, monitor calibration, and creative looks. Still, they're different in the way they affect pixel data, whereas presets can be described as a series of calculations that will change a pixel based on its hue and luminance. LUTs are a mathematically precise way of modifying specific RGB values in the image into new RGB values by changing the hue, saturation, brightness values of the source image. If I go back to my RGB picker value, let's say this color right here where my picks, uh, picker is at 100, 130, and 163. A LUT will mathematically change those numbers into something different depending on whatever that LUT is. Let's go and um, open up our LUT folder. So go into your project settings you have this gear icon here, file, and then project settings or shift nine. Go into color management. 
and scroll down to lookup tables. You've got a ton of little drop downs here, but at the very bottom it says open LUT folder. This is an easy way of getting to your LUT folder because it is a long tree to get to there. So this is my LUT folder. I've got a few other LUTs here. You will see some that are similar, some folders here you, won't, you may not have on your own computer. So first, let's create a new folder and let's call it training LUT. What we're going to do is navigate to our lesson 13 folder and inside that lesson 13 folder is a LUT that we can copy. All right, so I'm in my lesson 13 folder and here's this lesson 13 LUT.cube. So a real quick examination of what a LUT is. I'm just using a text editor and it's a 3D LUT and there's a bunch of numbers. This is the mathematical kind of um, calculations that it's doing and this is just a ton of ton of a ton of numbers. So it's changing all these different values from one, one RGB value to another one. All right, so I'm gonna close this. I'll copy this over into my training let's folder. Okay, I'm going to command tab back into resolve. And before I save, I'm going to update the list and then save out. All right, so let's actually look at our LUTs. Resolve has a LUT browser in which you can quickly scroll through all the different LUTs that are in your LUT folder and allow you to quickly preview the LUT over your clip. So let's click on training LUT. Now what I'm going to do is click on a different clip and Let's take a look at this LUT. Now the LUT browser is great. You can hover your mouse over any of these LUTs and it's going to apply the LUT temporarily on your clip and you can hover and you can skim back and forth and it works just like the live media preview. So it's giving you a live media preview of the LUT that's applied to your node. If we like it, we can add this LUT in a couple different ways. We can double click and it adds it. You can also right click and add LUT to current node. Or finally, I'm undoing that, you can just click and drag and move that over to a specific node. One thing to note is that LUTs are an actual destructive calculation, meaning if a LUT causes your clip to, um, your shot to clip, in the highlights or the shadows, any correction you do in a subsequent node will actually will actually clip also. So what that means is this. So I've applied my LUT to my first node and before that, after. Okay, so you can see down in our scopes that something's clipping right here, right? And most likely it'll be this white part of her helmet or possibly some sort of specular highlights here. If I jump to my node, my next node, and I'm trying to recover the highlights, either by bringing down my gain, I'm not actually bringing back any detail here. If I'll add a node before the current using add node before current, shift S. So if I do my um, operations before, I'll bring this back. If I do my operations before the LUT, and I'll bring this down, you can see that it's actually recovering detail from whatever was clipping there. So let me do that again. Look at this specifically and watch as I am bringing down. Okay, so again, 
LUTs are destructive. It does clip data. But if you're working um, on nodes prior to the LUTs, then you can recover that data. So one tip that I recommend is if you are working with LUTs and you want to add a LUT, add that LUT to the last part of your node tree. So do operations before and then have the LUT at the end. Okay, one thing about the LUT browser is that Resolve provides a lot of different LUTs for you to, to check out. Um, they give you some LUTs that are more normalizing LUTs. And so for example, these black magic LUTs, these airy LUT, this airy LUT. Um, they also provide some different looks, for example, the film looks. So you've got different looks over here that approximate Kodak film or Fuji film and different type of film stocks. And Rec. 709 versus DCI-P3, D60, D55. So the first one, DCI-P3 or Rec. 709, that's your color space of what you're using. P3 is generally theatrical, DCI, and Rec. 709 is HD uh, and web. Then your white points, generally, for our monitors here, it's D65. So I'm going to jump back to this and find a, let's do a Kodak D65. So it's adding this on top of the correction that we've made. So we'll reset that and we'll see how it is directly on that. You can even play with, you know, different white points here. You can see the difference in the color here. So there's Fuji, there's a Kodak one. You can even Try a P3, different color space. Okay, I've got a few here. You can find these for free. There's a ton of different LUTs out there, um, but they're, they're not custom created for your specific type of film. They're just broadly created for certain looks. So just be careful uh, when you're out there looking for LUTs or LUT packages um, to see who's building them, what, and what they're built for. Most LUTs that you see out there that people are selling or giving you to download can be recreated in your color correction program. It just takes a little bit of time. So let's go back to this clip and let's reset it. Let's add our LUT and we'll further tweak this by adding a serial node and let's increase the contrast just a little bit to make it an even starker contrast. And then let's add some warmth to it. So we'll warm up the highlights just a little bit. I'll bring some of that in the midtones also. Okay, cool. Let's play that. All right. High contrast warm look. And we can save this look also. I'll grab this as a still. Let's say we like this look and we actually want to save it as our own LUT, as our own custom LUT. You can generate your own um, LUT through Resolve. Let's right click on the thumbnail here, and this is in that clip. Towards the bottom, it says generate 3D LUT cube. And then you can do a 3D LUT in the Panasonic V LUT. We'll use Cube for this one. Let's title this Cool Warm Air. And let's put it in our training LUT. Let's save it there. And if it if you don't see it, you can refresh and it should pop up. And now you can add this to any clip that you want. So we'll reset. And this one, we can also add that there. Here, we could add it if we wanted to. and creates an interesting look. So that is saving a LUT. Now, for your assignment, 
you're going to have to upload that LUT to me also. So an easy way of doing that is going back into your LUT folder. So project settings, color management, open LUT folder. And this brings you directly to that LUT folder. So training LUT and this cool warm air dot cube. This is what we created. So just create a copy of it. So copy, cool, and then, and you can include that in your final delivery files on the server. So again, that's how you get that LUT that you created and submit that to me. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is another look. It's called a bleach bypass or a skip bleach. This is back in the days where um, people shot film and you've seen this look a lot on films like Saving Private Ryan, Minority Report. Um, they have this higher contrast look and it's a little bit desaturated. So we're gonna recreate that look. Let's reset all of the color here. You can go to color reset all grades and nodes. So it's going to reset everything in this clip itself. All right, so the first thing we wanna do in creating our um, bleach bypass look is our desaturation. Lower our saturation a little bit, and then let's jump into the curves to create some custom um, curves. So, Let's create two control points here on the curve. Now, if you wanted to, let me reset this. If you wanted to create control points along this curve without actually moving it, and see how I'm moving it here, you can shift click along the curve. Whoops. Shift click along this curve and you'll create control points without moving the the line. Okay, so we want to bring down our shadows a bit and then increase our highs to create this higher contrast, less saturation. So I'm going to drop it down even further. Okay. Let's say this looks good, and I'm going to grab this still. I'm gonna jump out of my LUTs browser into my gallery. This is the look that we just created. We'll call this Bleach Bypass. And we can save grades and use these um, across multiple projects in our database. So right now, these are saved for this specific project. So I can use this, these, for all the different timelines I may have in my project. But if I wanted to share these across projects, I'll need to save them as a different type of grade or save it into a different type of album. Open up your stills album over here and below the Stills 1 album is a power grade. Power grades are available across all the different projects that you create within your database. So if I wanted to get my Bleach Bypass as a look for all of my projects, I'll just move it into my power grade. Same with this. If I wanted to move this, create it there. I can move it back into my Stills if I wanted to. and I'll save that. So if I jumped into, so let's get the power grade, this is a bleach bypass. So if I jumped into, let's say my citizen chain project, and I wanted to jump to my power grade, and there it is, my bleach bypass. Let me apply it to this clip, I'll reset, apply it there.
And there's my bleach bypass on this. Okay, so let me jump back into my gnarly and pink. I won't save that. Okay, that's lesson 13. And that's um, pretty much all for for the color correction stuff and the resolve um, training. In the next chapters, they're going to dive into delivering a project and doing database management.